ride or die Cause I'm low on the phone, you say So I talk till I drop, you say How could I have a heart made of stone while you Oh, when we synchronize It's exactly what I throw and I fantasize Playing games with my mind, making us collide And we know how it goes when we're out at night And I don't know Happy holidays, everybody, and welcome to our annual 2K TV holiday episode. I know Christmas is the time everybody's watching NBA games, but I'm most looking forward to Celtics and Nets. And like the whole world, we can't wait to watch KD return to the court. We come to you tonight from the shores of Lake Erie as the streets of downtown Cleveland, Ohio are alive with activity. This is it. Opening day, the regular season is set to begin and we're thrilled to bring you all the live action right here on 2K Sports. And on tap tonight, it's the Cleveland Cavaliers going up against the Charlotte Hornets. This is Kevin Harlan and joining me tonight, Chris Weber and Greg Anthony with our Hall of Famer David Aldridge reporting from the sidelines. DA, take it away. Well, the ceremony was delayed and understandably so, but at last, the Hall of Fame class of 2020 was enshrined. And what a class it was. Led by Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, and of course, the late great Kobe Bryant headlining the nine inductees. There was tremendous poignancy with Kobe's inclusion coming so recently after his tragic death. And it was a night that none of us are going to forget. Guys? Thank you, DA. Well, this seems to be a game that could be very tactical, Greg. Both teams relying on execution in the half court. And, Kevin, you're going to see a lot of ball movement and body movement, and you can't just stand around and watch one guy go to work. I think that puts so much pressure on the defense. 
with how the game is played. And an emphasis on coaching, too. Yes. And a look at the starters for the Hornets. Washington and Zeller are in the middle. Andre Graham is out there with Rozier, and it's Hayward in at the three, the small forward. And for the Cavaliers, Garland and Sexton man the backcourt. Then it's Okoro. Then there's Andre Drummond, and it's Osman in at the four slot. And the foul called on P.J. Washington. That's his first foul. Now, here's Garland. Knocks it loose. Washington with it. Garland picks him up. Here's Graham. And he takes it in for the layup off a very nice feed. Alert play on the part of Washington. He's a much stronger player when he shows the type of awareness and unselfishness. Zeller against Drummond. Pass to Garland. Wide open. And he nails the jumper. And that's when the double team hurts the defense. I mean, when they're guarding the player smart enough to pass out of it and find the man left alone. About one minute into the first quarter. Sexton the pass to Okoro. The pass to Garland. A three-pointer, no good. Oh, if you can't hit that one, your teammates are going to think twice about feeding you the next time. Down. And he gets the basket. Officials blowing the whistle, so a chance at the line for one more. So it'll be Terry Rozier shooting. Darius Garland picks one up. And see, well, really, because of that raw athleticism, Rozier was a mid-first-round pick back in 2015. And you can see, though, that skill set is evolving. Well, that's why Charlotte gave him the three-year, $58 million contract. I mean, the feeling is he's still reaching his full potential. We saw signs of growth last year. And talk about playing small. Last year, Charlotte had Rozier and Devontae Graham on the floor together for much of the time. Both players right around 6'1". But you know what? They held their own. Now, here's Garland. Out to the wing. Right side, Sexton. Gets it to go from beyond the arc. And of course, Rozier played a fair amount of off guard before he came to Charlotte. And, and Kevin, back in Boston, he learned how to move without the ball, where to spot up. And those may have been hard lessons early on, but the development paid off. Rozier has become a much more versatile talent. Here's Sexton following the bucket by the Hornets. And it's Drummond with the jam. Drummond, uh, he's such a quick leaper. He, he's a force around the rim. And it's out, out of, of bounds. bounds. The Hornets able to retain possession here. Let's see some of the numbers here for Colin Sexton. Last year, getting it done. Last season, he averaged 20 points a game, three assists, and three rebounds. And he does so much for this team, but it starts with the way he leads the offense. Yeah, he's willing to take on the scoring load, and he's more than capable of delivery. Washington, that's good. A little contact, but Washington stays solid. I mean, he uses some physical play to ensure the bucket. Pass to Okoro. The basket good off the assist from Sexton. A really smart opening quarter for them at the offensive end. Moving, finding good shots. They're four for five from the field. He muscles it in through the contact, and they call the foul. And he's on his way to the free throw line. And they're forcing the ball inside, and it's working like a charm. And making an immediate impact in this league, Graham was a tremendous find in the second round. Yeah, the 34th pick in 2018. Some scouts felt he had a low ceiling, but someone who never loses confidence because he's had to prove himself at every level. That makes you battle tested, and it prepares you to affect winning. First quarter of basketball, just over two and a half minutes play. And so the ball's out of bounds. Graham touched it last. 
Here's the list of players who had the most steals in the NBA last season. Third is Andre Drummond. He showed such tremendous defensive instincts. Trust me, nobody wanted him guarding them last year. Sexton with it. In the loss to the Knicks the other night, definitely was not himself. From deep, a three-pointer is right on target. Sexton's got six. And you see the work Drummond has put in the pass and the ball. Solid at spotting the open man. Three-pointer, Graham. It's not going to go for him. So Cleveland will take it the other way. Ball's knocked loose. And Drummond kicks to Dotson. Back to Drummond. Passes to Austin. Some nice passing by Cleveland here. And the basket is good. Got it to go through on the contact. So a free throw coming up. A great opportunity for a three-point play. Greg, you played over a decade in the NBA. Is there an opening day that you remember most that sticks out in your mind? No doubt. The, the, the very first time I put on that Knicks jersey, you know, your rookie What's year, uh, the game was in Orlando. I got to play 28 minutes, which was a lot for a rookie back then, especially on a really good team. And uh, it was an awesome experience. That was a moment you had dreamt of your entire life if you grew up wanting to play basketball, man. And I was pumped. That's a great story. Greg, maybe not the tallest big in the league, but Washington's reach is the great equalizer. He stands only 6'7", but that 7'2 wingspan, it allows him to play big, snatch rebounds in traffic, and make contested shots in the paint. I think the young fella's got a bright future. And here are the Cavaliers now, following the three by Charlotte. Uh, that's going to draw a whistle every time down the floor, not even close to being a legal screen. And he knows it, too. He tried to get away with it. Sometimes you do. That time he didn't. And here's Hayward. He'll bring it up for the Charlotte Hornets. Here's Rozier. Count it. Ten points for him. Uh, I don't think you can stop Rozier just by getting physical with him. He, he's too single-minded a score to let that stop. Pass to Sexton. To the left wing. Takes a three. Here's Drummond. Goes up and lays it nice and easy. Drummond's got his second bucket of the game to go. Oh, he tacks the glass with a ferocity that you have to see to believe. Rebounding, that's his forte. That works just like they drew it up. Until the part where he short arms the layup. Back to Sexton. A three-pointer off the mark. The Hornets have gone 8 of 11 in the first quarter. They'll take that percentage any night. They get it again, and out of bounds. The Cavaliers will take it. And taking a look at some stats here for Rozier, a very nice season for him last year. 17th and three-point field goal percentage, and he'd make you pay every time he went to the line. Top 20 in free throw percentage. And one of the better three-point shooters in the league last season. And as you said, he was really good from out deep practically every time we saw him play. Now, here's Okoro up there for Drummond and stolen by Zeller and a fast break now for the Hornets here's Hayward Cavaliers with the rebound playing him tough inside and preventing the layup gotta get the whole team pumped up Okoro wide open he fires the basket good off the assist from Sexton Sexton's got three assists in the game here's Graham it drops for his third basket he's missed only one shot For the Cleveland Cavaliers, they come in off the loss to New York. And Graham throws it down. Well, if you don't take care of the ball, fellas, that's what can happen. Absolutely, Greg. That makes the turnover even more painful. Yeah, going defense to offense in an instant. Every team now calibrated to do that. And it's the Cavaliers with the ball, following the bucket by the Hornets. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Devontae Graham. That'll be his second foul of the game. And the Cavaliers making a change here. Nance is checked in. And a switch here also for Charlotte. Miles Bridges, he's checked in for Washington. Nance against Hayward. And Nance kicks to Drummond. Just five to shoot. Here's Dotson. The wing jumper off target. 
You're not going to see that very often. Plenty of space, but he just, let's face it, he whiffs on that. Rozier uses the glass to finish the layup. Rozier's got 12. Uh, look how Rozier just burst inside, crashing right through the contact to get the shot. Now the pass to Drummond. Back to Dotson. That one falls, his second basket of the game. He's now two for three. And they've scored several times already here in the first quarter on the inside. Snatched up. A nice shot by Zeller. And the work ethic of Zeller. Now that's what makes him dangerous when scoping out opportunities on the offensive glass. That's tipped. Now Sexton. He has six. And there's the call on Cody Zeller. That's his first foul. And now only one away from being in the penalty. Biombo is checked in for Charlotte. Ball comes in for Devontae Graham. Here's Windler, defended by Bridges. Shot clock at six. McGee finds Sexton. Yep, that one goes. He's got the hot hand right now. As long as he can keep getting open, they've got to keep feeding him. Here's Rozier. That falls. Nice feed that time from Ball. 14 points for him. They are just killing him on the interior. This is his second trip to the free throw line. You know, this is not an area where they expect him to contribute. You know, he's a guy that shot below 70% last season. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And he knocks down the first one. Ray, can you really compare players from completely different eras? I mean, people love to talk about the greatest of all time. You know, Kev, some players do transcend eras. There's no doubt about that. Wilt's a great example, and there are many others. But, but in reality, to your point, the style and the way in which the game was played was so different uh, that it isn't fair. I mean, all you can be is the best of your generation or one of the best, and I, I think that should stand no matter what the conversation is. Like, there's no doubt in your mind Oscar Robertson could play in this era as well as he played when he played. No doubt. Bill Russell, all those guys. Yes, truly yes. great ones. So much of your ability to perform at a high level is built around your confidence and your belief in your abilities, and those guys had it as much as anybody who's ever played the game. The first one falls. Oh my gosh, I just got that. Ball hits them both. Oh my gosh, I just got that. Here's Dotson. Six points for him. Outside, Sexton. Ball with the rebound. Well, he makes a lot more of those than he misses. Not sure what threw him off right there. Rozier, and he bangs it home with one hand. It's fun watching Rozier take over. I mean, he has so many tricks and fun shots up his sleeve. Here's Dotson. Rozier defending, and they're pushing it up. Here's Bridges, finished off the break. And now a nine-point Hornets lead. Attacking in transition, the most consistent way to generate easy looks. Yeah, you can tell they love to get out and run when the opportunity is there. Now here's Nance. Nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. McGee, the pass to Sexton. Yes, that goes in. Oh, he's been dominant this court. I mean, he's determined to prevent the lead from getting any bigger. And he dunks it down. So effective off the dribble. Ro Rogier maneuvers himself nicely when driving the lane. 
And here's Sexton. Ten points for him. Pass to Dotson. Out left to the wing. This one for three. And another three for Cleveland. And that's exactly what he's looking for, draining the triple. Here's Rozier. That falls. Nice feed that time from Ball. Ball's got his fourth assist with that last one here tonight. The Cavaliers trail by eight. Here's Dotson. From down in the low post, it goes. Dotson's got eight points. Uh, he must have had a good warm-up because he's hot. I mean, he's three for four already, and we're only getting started. Oh, that's just a terrific night for him from the floor, making almost everything he looks at. Passes it to Windler. He kicks to Sexton. Pass to Windler. Shoots over Bridges. That one's not going to go. And Charlotte will go the other way with it. Here's Zeller. And that one is good. He's got six. When you find yourself up double digits in the first quarter, you know you're doing something right. Yeah, true. But now it's about sustaining their energy and maintaining the focus. Now here's Sexton. Shoots over Bridges. And again, it's Cleveland. He's wrapped up his game in a big way this quarter. I don't think he likes it when they're trailing. So Charlotte calls timeout. They're first. Uh, adjustments are a part of the game, and the coach sees something he doesn't like here. Yeah, I, I like the chess match that's going on here. Each team trying to find and, and exploit the favorable matchup on the floor. Akers check in for Cleveland. And check out the numbers for Nance. He had a strong showing last season. Averaged 10 points per game, 7 rebounds, and 2 assists. Guys, he's a difference maker off the bench. Steps into that front court and more than holds his own. Well, it's his willingness to bang down low or move opponents off the block. Those are valuable contributions. The defense not putting up any fight on the inside. They've allowed 10 straight points in the paint. Sexton the pass to Windler. Back to Sexton. And the call will be against LaMelo Ball. That's his first foul of the game, and the bonus will go to the free throw line. The Cavaliers have shot two of three from the free throw line tonight. Sexton. Two shots. Shooting two. Free throw good, Sexton. Greg is a point guard. You must have had so much fun being surrounded by so much terrific talent at UNLV. You know, Larry Johnson, Stacy Ogman. I mean, I could go on and on. And you're right. I was blessed to play alongside these guys. They were incredible talents, finishers. And, you know, you don't always appreciate it going through that moment. But sure. the fact that we're all still close and stay in contact. Uh, man, what an awesome experience to be a part of that team. Chemistry must have been off the charts on that team. It was, and, and we had a lot of personalities, man. It was a different era back then. Uh, but I tell you, again, I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. Got a piece of it. Here's Rozier. It's tipped. Here's Dotson. Defended by Bridges. There's 53 seconds left in the first. Here's Dotson. That's tipped. I love Rozier putting that much effort into his D. Let's see more of the same in every possession. 
Six on the shot clock. Poked away. Rozier with the steal. Here's Ball. Chalk up two there. And now it's a 12-point Hornets lead. Defensively giving up far too many open rhythm looks. And the pass to Windler. Here's Dotson. 15 seconds left in the first quarter. Bridges with the board. And here's the fast break. Ball leading the way. It's good. Rozier's got 24. Really seizing the momentum of this game, but doing it with a methodical approach. They've decided to pound the ball inside, using their physicality to set the tone. And so it's Charlotte sitting with a comfortable lead up by 14. And we'll see if they can keep up their tremendous shooting. They've been dialed in so far from the field. And we'll be back with you shortly. And welcome back to the second quarter of action. Plenty of basketball left to play, but this one has been one-sided so far. And a comfortable margin for the Hornets here, guys. Well, you can see these guys are unafraid to take chances defensively. Yeah, it's a gambling style that pays off, keeping things in disarray for that offense. Here's Garland. Osman outside at three with Nance down at the power forward spot. Then there's Garland. Then there's Maker. And it's Windler in at the two-guard spot. That's the five for Cleveland right now. And Nance kicks to Garland. Lock at six. And that one's good. Osman. But the D didn't do a good enough job on it. He could be an ace when he gets a good look at three. And that's good from Bismack Biombo on the assist by Ball. Ball's got his eighth assist here tonight. The Cavaliers trail by 13. Garland, the pass to Maker. Here's Osman. He's coming off a 19-point game against the Knicks in New York. And one of the things that stands out when you see Bridges, that explosive leaping ability. But yeah, he gets off the ground quickly and makes adjustments in midair. There's a smoothness to his athleticism. He's still putting it all together, but there's a lot to work with. Osman, the pass to Maker. He's now one for two with that bucket. There aren't many players as big as Maker. He realizes this. Nice work inside. Here's Ball. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. And you know what? Very close to a three-point play right there. On the night, he's gone two for two at the stripe. That's good from Ball. Some changes for Charlotte. Gordon Hayward's checked in for Biombo, and Devontae Graham subbed in for Terry Rozier. Ball hits them both. Greg is a point guard. What is it you like to see from that position on the floor? I think first and foremost, leadership. Uh, it, it's so valuable at that spot. And, you know, you, you, you always got to have your head high because your teammates are feeding off what you put forth in terms of your body language and enthusiasm. So, you know, the typical stuff about organizing offense and, and setting the tone on the defensive end, that stuff's important as well. But so much of how you carry yourself out on the floor when you deal with adversity and you know that you're going to it, it is really paramount. 
Here's Drummond. That one goes in. Drummond's got six points. What an amazing display of concentration by Drummond. Taking the hit like a champ and completing the bucket. Rebound Andre Drummond. Give it up for the D. No fear. You risk getting posterized. You know what, though? But you still take him out. Uh, something going wrong with the D out there. He's uh, one of the guys you got to be worried about on the perimeter. Graham with the bucket. 11 points in the game. They're finding lanes to the hoop now with consistency. Five buckets in a row from the paint. Pass to Maker. Cleveland moving the ball around. To the wing on the left. They get the rebound. Drummond. And it's Drummond with the jam. And, and how about the offensive rebound with a little extra punch on the putback? You're right, Greg. As they look to trim the deficit, could we see them send a few more bodies to the boards from here on out? Maybe. Just maybe. And the Hornets call time here. And at last season's trade deadline, Andre Drummond traded away basically for a second-round pick. A shockingly low return for a guy who was once considered a franchise player. to check out the stats for Andre Drummond. Last season, he played outstanding. He averaged about 17 points a game last year, 15 rebounds and two assists. And the phrase stats don't lie absolutely <laughs> applies here. He's been a monster on the court for this team. Uh, he's oozing with confidence. I mean, and it shows. Every time he steps on the floor, he expects to dominate. And Greg, why is it that the Pistons got so little in exchange for Drummond? Well, I, I think he was an impending free agent. I think Detroit looking to rebuild. Also, it says something about the center position in today's game. First one falls for him. And they have yet to miss a shot from the line here this quarter. That one falls, so he hits both of them. Oh my gosh, I just got that. Three minutes of action so far in the second quarter. Now, here's Garland. Graham defending. Here's Osman. Good on the shot. Osman's got eight points in the quarter. I like that pick play. I mean, you can see how easily it makes it for him to get to the cup. Here's Graham. And again, the Hornets missing. That's one he knows he should have drained. And stolen by Graham. Here's Bridges, and it's slammed in by Bridges. Well, once Bridges realized the break was on, I mean, he was off to the races. His coaches will appreciate his effort. Level. The Cavaliers trail by 14. And there's the foul. It's on Miles Bridges. That's his first foul. Let's take another look at the staunch defense during that mobile one block. The, the defensive awareness, the timing, when you have to face a defender that can reject you like that, it can alter your approach. Passes it to Osman. Harlan with it. Oh, 
And Cleveland with another turnover here. Let's take a look at the players who were the best on the glass a season ago. Number one, Andre Drummond. And you know, he took a lot of pride in being at the top of that rebounding list. When all was said and done, he was a man among boys. Charlotte leading by 14. And it's in, basket number six for him thus far. He has only missed two shots from the floor. And when they've gone to him, he has come through big time. You gotta keep getting him touches. Doubled by Bridges. They get a hand on it and stolen by Graham. Okay, well, let's go down to David Aldridge for a report from the sideline. Kevin, thank you. Now, we have seen continued growth with the NBA's affiliated leagues the last few years. Think about the explosion in popularity of the WNBA, the Basketball Africa League, expansion of the 2K League, greater pay in the WNBA and the G League pathway, along with the unionization of G League players. The league continues to show its commitment to expanding opportunities on multiple levels. Guys, back to you. Thank you, David. Washington with it. He's picked up by Drummond. And how about the pressure they're able to now start to apply, taking advantage of every miscue? Timeout is called first of the game for the Cavaliers. And a move Hayward perfected last season, coming to a full stop in the lane and hitting that little short jumper. Yeah, Greg, I mean, he, he'd stop and defend us, but just keep going. Every player uses different tactics to create separation. For Hayward, that became his go-to move off the bounce. Vale McGee's checked in for Maker. Now, here's Garland. Eight points his last outing. McGee in the high post. Five on the clock. They need this. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. Well, there are a few players in the league that can match McGee's athleticism. I mean, his whole career, he's been a class above with his speed and lead. He'll make the most of it on both ends of the court. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. That free throw, no good. And see, Webb, you, you mentioned it with JaVale McGee. His vertical is off the charts. Oh, yeah, he can get to alley -oops GA that nobody else can. The length and bounce he has is jaw-dropping. I mean, same goes for his shot-blocking abilities when he times it up. That one misses. Greg, you played against uh, some terrific players, including the, the late, great Kobe Bryant. I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on playing against Kobe. I mean, his passing is still tough, I'm sure, for many to deal with because he was just taken from us at such a young age. Uh, but this guy was a ferocious competitor and someone who showed us in life and in tragedy uh, that you need to make the most of every moment that we have here. You know, I just appreciated to really the fans getting to know Kobe once his career was over because I think he was able to let his guard down a little bit and show us a lighter side, a more compassionate side. That is an excellent point.
Hornets shooting a mind-boggling 79% off the floor. And it's sent back by Drummond. Oh, he knows he has to be their defensive anchor. I mean, when Drummond hustles on this end, he can get these blocks. Cleveland's gotten off 12 shots from beyond the arc tonight, hitting seven of them. Pass to McGee. Here's Osman, defended by Hayward, and the officials call him for a three-second violation. And here's what the Cleveland Cavaliers' schedule looks like. On Saturday, they'll be playing against Blake Griffin and the Detroit Pistons. Then on Sunday, they'll face off against Ben Simmons and the Philadelphia 76ers. Baseline try, and there's another one for the Hornets. And that set them apart today, guys. Their success with the mid-range. Cleveland's gone two of four from three-point range so far in the second quarter. And the Cavaliers call time here. And the lack of rim protection, top of the list. Without question. They're giving up too many high percentage looks, a trend that they'd like to reverse. Cavaliers making a switch here. Sexton's checked in. And a switch here also for Charlotte. Cody Zeller's checked in for Bridges. Harlan with it. In the corner, Okoro with it. Bangs home the trifecta. Okoro's got his third bucket of the night. It's first triple of the second quarter, third of the game. Here's Graham, and finished off by Graham. Just playing with poise and confidence, and they continue to put points on the board. They're just playing smart basketball, reading the floor well and executing. Cleveland's gone three of five beyond the arc since the start of the second quarter. Poked loose. Garland dishes to Drummond. Plays it up and banks it in. Drummond's got six here in this quarter. In the painted area, Drummond is a wrecking ball. He finishes through contact like it was nothing. And there's the basket. Whistle blows and a chance for a three-point play. Going to the line for one. Uh, the defense is aggressive on him, but when you're giving up that much height, there's only so much you can do. The Hornets have been at their finest form at the free throw line tonight. Eight attempts, eight makes. Catching up on the changes for Cleveland. Nance comes in for Drummond. And Damian Dotson subbed in for a Coro. Free throw off from ball. For Cleveland, they've gone 8 of 12 since the start of the second quarter. That's a really high percentage, hitting around 67%. Left side, Nance. The wide open look here for Garland. Another three for Cleveland. They're, they're getting a lot of their points outside the paint. Three of their last five baskets are from three-point range. Well, this is the kind of teammate Zeller is willing to give it up when he has guys open. Cleveland's gone four or six from long range in the second quarter. Solid shooting and stolen by Graham. Here's Hayward. The basket is good off the assist from Graham. Hayward's got eight points. And, and I like the fact that he really was unfazed by that scoreless first quarter, and now you can see him getting into a rhythm. Sexton kicks to Garland. Some nice passing by Cleveland here. And stolen by Hayward. Out in his own on the break. Here's Graham and the dunk by Graham. 
Well, that was all created by Hayward's defensive work. He does so much to spark their transition game. Now, Garland. Five points in the game. And Cleveland with another turnover here. And checking out some numbers for Grant. Good season for him last year. Averaged 18 points per. Seven assists and three rebounds. And he continues to hone his game. I think the potential is there. Oh, yeah. You can see the potential, but it's raw. He needs to keep refining that skill set. The baseline, Jay. Tries again. Shot by Zeller. No good. And that's out of bounds. Cleveland will retain possession. Remains Cleveland ball. Cavaliers making a switch here. Windler's checked in. Enzo, Sexton will bring it up for the Cavaliers. They've got the Pistons ahead of them in their next game in Detroit. That will be a getaway game for them, a one-game road trip and a missed layup. They've been doing a great job of sharing the ball. And guys, shot A comes to mind for me because right now that offense, it's a smooth operator. Right, even though he's on the move and takes some contact, Hayward keeps his balance and gets it down. It falls for the sixth time in seven tries this contest. That's 86%. Yeah, it's been about the fast break. Been real kind to him here early, and they are clicking in transition. Sexton against Ball. Sexton's shot is good. And he's really shot the ball well, but, but it hasn't been contagious. Here's Hayward, and the bucket is good. Three-point play chance here for him. That's the combination of skill and strength. Hayward draws contact. I mean, keeps his eyes on the rim and finishes the play. First trip to the free throw line for him tonight. And some changes here for the Hornets. Biombo checks in for Washington. And it's Rozier in for ball. He was just a skinny kid coming out of college. Hayward's gotten much stronger and much better in a short period of time. To the inside, Windler, and he floats in for the easy two. Credit the assist on that one. And guys, they continue to put a lot of pressure on the interior defenders with their work down low. And it's Graham missing. Cleveland's gone four or six from long range in the second quarter. Solid shooting. The drive by Nance, and foul on the shot, so he'll get a chance at the line. No question, he got bumped on that shot. This is his first trip to the line tonight. You know, this is not an area where they expect him to contribute. You know, he's a guy that shot below 70% last season. Take a break, take a break. Two shots. First free throw is good. Both free throws good from Nance. Here's Graham. He's coming off a 25-point game against Orlando. Biombo finds Rogier. McGee with the block. Oh, this is McGee's role. He's out here to defend and to stifle shooters whenever he can. He's pulling out all the tricks this quarter. They can't figure out how to stop him. The pass to Dotson. And here's Sexton. 16 points for him. Off the mark there with the three-point shot. Hayward with the ball. He's picked up by Nance. Rogier for three. It's rebounded by Cleveland. Outside, Sexton. Pass to Windler. Sexton deciding where to go with it. Down to five on the shot clock. Windler's shot is off. 
Charlotte in total control. Here's Biombo. And the three ball is good. Biombo's got seven points for the quarter. And he found the perfect spot behind the arc there. Big gap in the deep. Windler, the pass to Sexton. 44 seconds left in the first half. To the left side wing, Dotson. Cleveland keeps it going, a new 14-second shot clock. And great job by Nance attacking at the rim. That's why you scout for effort players that do it consistently every night. Uh, good anticipation on the feed. Uh, he, he knows exactly where to go with that ball. Thirty seconds left here in the second. Cleveland's gone an even 50% from three-point range in the second quarter. Four for eight. Here's Windler, defended by Hayward. To the middle, here's Dotson. Makes it off the glass. Dotson's got 10 points in the game. That's just a product of good pass work. I mean, nice team basketball right there. Here's Zeller, banked in off the glass. He has great body control for a big man. Zeller takes the hit, but keeps on finishing. Outside, Sexton. And no good on the last second attempt this time. And so it's Charlotte going to the break, holding an enormous 36-point lead. From the field, they have been outstanding, amazing shooting. That's what has them headed to a blowout. Right back after this break. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Ernie Johnson here with Shaq and Kenny and a favorite time of the year as we're halfway through one of the first games of this fresh NBA season. After the first two quarters of play, it's Charlotte in control. They are completely in control of the game, leading by a massive amount. Kenny, give us your take. They look like they were playing an easy game of pitch and catch out there. The playmakers and finishers were in sync on every level. The assist disparity, now that was big. Now that's the reason why it's a blowout right now, and they play well. Shaq, how do you think Cleveland played? They didn't show enough toughness in, in the paint on D. When you're getting dominated in the post, it sets a bad tone. You always want to win that physical battle in the area. Otherwise, you, you wind up with a score like this. I don't believe I'm watching this. And that does it for our halftime show. We now take you back to Kevin Harlan for the start of the third period. And with the second half upon us, we'll find out if this game becomes the route that it's threatening to be. Ice game, great performance by Terry Rozier. Well, he left his mark on that first half with his quick hands. Great sense of timing to pile up the steals. Yeah, he's busting his tail, making his presence known. A great job defensively so far. And with a big gap on the scoreboard, the second half begins with very different goals for these teams. One side trying to mount a comeback, one side trying to protect their lead. On the court for the Hornets, Washington and Zeller are in the middle. Rogier is out there with Devontae Graham, and it's Hayward in at the three. Here's Washington shooting foul. As the whistle blows, he'll shoot two free throws. Darius Garland picks one up. But like most, Washington is at his best when he's attacking it at defenders. I mean, that attitude draws foul. First trip to the free throw line for him in this one. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And the first one drops. Well, for P.J. Washington, he's the rare first-round pick to come back for a second year of college at Kentucky, but I, but I think it did him well. He's perfect from the line this time. Oh my gosh, I just got that. Here's Sexton. Wow, 
lobbed up there for Drummond, and Drummond throws it down. Well, you just got to respect the leaping ability of Drummond, leaving the floor effortlessly, throwing it through the hoop. Hayward, and Hayward at the stuff. And he gives that rim a good tug on the way down. Well, that's how you drive your point home right there. Here's Garland. Hayward comes with the double team. Now, here's Garland. In the corner, Okoro with it. And it's off from three-point range. Hornets shooting has been sensational. 75% for the game. And Hayward with the stuff. This is what you're going to get with Hayward. He's aggressive. I mean, he can score the ball in a number of ways. He's just been absolutely terrific tonight. Passes it to Drummond. Hayward against Sexton. Six to shoot. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. It's going to go on Gordon Hayward. And he's just good at forcing the issue. Love seeing Sexton stay aggressive and just get under the D's skin. The Cavaliers have gone six of nine at the line. And if we want to take a look back, they converted about 76% from the line. And the first one at the line is good. And that's one of those guys who just tends to live at the line. Sexton's working hard to improve his consistency there. No good on the second, so he hits one of two. They have been board dominant in this game. That's definitely been a factor in crafting this huge lead. Oh, you got to love Rozier. Skying up for the dunk. Really seizing the opportunity and capitalizing with this tremendous leaping ability. Sexton against Rozier. Rozier with the steal. Yep, that one goes in there. Graham's got 25 points in the game. It hasn't taken them any time to find their rhythm in the second half. Four for four from the field already. Wide open look. That one a little long. And they're one of four here to start the second half. Hayward goes in. The basket is good off the assist from Graham. Graham's got nine assists in the game. Great passing. Now here's Garland. Graham defending. A nice shot by Okoro. Second half of play with just under two and a half minutes gone. Let's it go from 14. Shot by Zeller, no good. The rotation in the D could be better here. It, it'll cost them next time if it's not. Garland, the pass to Okoro. Here's Osman. He's covered by Zeller. Here's Rozier. It's rebounded by Cleveland. Drummond's got six rebounds here tonight. Cleveland's gone one of three from downtown since halftime. Took him no time at all on that one. Sexton's got four points this quarter. The defense is far too slow to close out on those three-point attempts. Got that one up quick. These are the shots you want Washington taking. I mean, and you see the result right there. Cleveland's gone into the three-point range four times since halftime and buried two of them. And stolen by Zeller. Here's Rozier. Whistle blows. Basket is good. So a chance here for a three-point play. And the crisp passing has opened things up for them offensively. Miles Bridges, he's checked in for Charlotte. Mind the lanes. Mind the lanes. One shot. That's good from Rozier. Oh well, ball handlers like Rozier lift the whole team. I mean, his personality and attitude keep morale high through the entire game. To the paint, Rozier with the steal. 
Oh, and here comes Rogier. Oh, oh he delivers wow. that with I can't force. Believe it. I cannot believe that. And I think that play sort of sums up what we've seen tonight. Just simply being outplayed both sides of the ball. Smart basketball defensively turning into easy points. Now, here's Garland. Graham defending. Kept alive. Drummond. Outside, Sexton. Gets the three-pointer to fall. Sexton's got 23. Yeah, that's two straight three-pointers they've allowed. Rogier for three. And it's the Hornets another three. And they're really in a good position here, thanks in part to the way he's been able to score the basketball. Harlan with it. He's got five. Pass to Drummond. Now Sexton. Down low, Osman. The basket good off the assist from Sexton. Sexton's got six assists here tonight. And so Graham will bring it up for the Charlotte Hornets. The Oklahoma City Thunder will be in town for the next one. That game marks the first half of a quick two-game homestand. On the sideline, let's catch up with Hall of Famer David Aldridge. Hey, Kevin, thank you. There will be a subtle but significant change on the court this season. Wilson is now the official basketball supplier for the NBA and its affiliated leagues. In fact, they were the association's original supplier starting in 1946. Now, after a nearly four-decade hiatus, Wilson reclaims that position. Guys, back to you. We appreciate that, David. Thank you. Charlotte calls timeout. checked in for Cleveland. And a switcher also for Charlotte. Balls checked in. And he can't get the first one. so we can't get either to fall. It's a plus five advantage for them in rebounding after that one. And the basket by Rogier. Some players might wear down during this kind of run. He's only getting strong. Now, here's Garland. He's covered by ball. The feet to Okoro. That's another one for him, his fifth in just seven shots. I like that pick play. I mean, you can see how easily it makes it for him to get to the cup. To the wing right side. From the baseline. The putback. Great positioning on the putback. Drummond always stays active around the rim. He does not need a whole lot of room to, to throw back some missed shots. Let's it go from 14. And that one hits back iron. Garland kicks to Maker. There's the pass to Garland. Back to Maker. Here's Osman, defended by Bridges. Shot clock at six. Pass to Okoro. Let's it go from the wing. The Hornets pull it in. Zeller's got his seventh rebound of the game with that last one. Here's Washington. And it's sent back by Drummond. Now Garland. 
He's got five. From outside the arc, Zeller grabs the board. Zeller's got his eighth rebound here tonight. Here's Washington. Oh, and that one had the right spit on it, and it is good. Washington's got 10 points. Now, versatility is Washington's game. The mid-range jumper is one of his best weapons. Here's Drummond, and it's Drummond with the jam. Look, he may not be thought of as big for a center, but with his ability to go vertical, he sure plays big. From the wing, not going to go that time. And it's the Cavaliers taking it the other way. It's in and good for his sixth field goal in 10 attempts. You got to love his hustle, leaving the defense no time to react. And how about then not settling? I mean, instead of being lazy with the shot selection, they go right to the rim. It gives up a lot of size to most other power fours, but not too many of them can fly like he can. Cleveland's gotten the three-pointer to fall to the tune of 50% here in the third quarter. They've made three of six. Here's Osman. He's covered by Washington. And that one's good. Osman, 13 points in the game. I mean, he logs his first three of the second half. After nailing two in the first, they don't want to let this fella get going. Here's Ball. Again, the Hornets score. And here is Garland. And the layup's good off the glass. Oh, that's not the kind of interior defense you want. Way too slow to protect the rim. That's a two from Rozier. Hit some rim on the way in, and the bucket's good. Rozier's got 40 points. Cleveland's got more than a 50% success rate on their three-pointer since halftime. They're four of seven. Now, here's Garland. D right on him. Off target with the jump hook. And that's the battle they haven't been winning today. Their work on the glass has been porous, and that's got to change. And there's the call on Jetty Osman. That is his first foul of the game. McDaniels, he's checked in for Charlotte. Monk comes in for Ogier. And that was a great replay we just saw of our mobile one block. And that'll give him a jolt. Nothing like a rejection to light a fire under you. Washington kicks to Monk. Releases from the wing and drills it. Monk's got his first two points. Well, another part of his game uh, that is coming along nicely. Give Monk these looks and he's going to cash in. And part of yet another great Kentucky recruiting class, Monk declared along with De'Aaron Fox, Bam Adebayo, two other five stars. I mean, talk about an NBA factory. That school is always competitive. Pass to Dotson. Here is McGee. He's been patient so far. Nothing on the scoreboard yet. Garland with the bucket. First three of the half, second of the game. Can he heat up? And so it's Ball with it. He brings it up for the Hornets. And Monk made second team All-American in his only year with the Wildcats. Looking unstoppable on many occasions. I mean, he just overwhelmed college opponents with his athleticism. But you get to the NBA, you find out how many great athletes are in this league. That's when you have to retool aspects of your game, which is what Monk is in the process of doing. Shot from the inbound, and Nance with the layup. Nance has got four this quarter. Yeah, this league is in good shape when you talk about guys like Nance. The consummate role player does everything that's asked of him. And the shot goes down. And with the success they've had rebounding the basketball, they're right where you'd expect them to be, firmly in the driver's seat. Inside, and the slam dunk by McGee. Well, that's just too easy for McGee. I mean, the minute he establishes position in this area, the defense is done. Here's Ball. Good. Nice job down low. Ball's got 20 points. And the Cavaliers with possession here. Back to Dotson. Kicks it to Garland. 
Back to Dotson. Shot clock at five. Offensive rebound. Pass to Garland. A second chance effort. Unable to get that one. Charlotte has gone three of five from beyond the arc so far tonight. Here's Monk. And it's good off the back rim and in. Oh, great ball movement from Bridges there. I mean, the self-awareness, uh, the selfless attitude leading to the wide open shot. To the paint, here's McGee. And they call the foul, so he's got the and one chance here to make it a three-point play. And they're passing the ball very crisply here. Sexton, he's checked in for Garland. That's good from McGee. Uh, at this point of his career, McGee knows who he is, a hustler, an energy guy who uses his athleticism to his advantage. Now Cleveland shooting percentage, 59%. The offense is running smoothly. To the inside, Sexton, count it. And with that basket, he's now 9 of 15 from the floor. Again and again, they're dissecting the defense and creating those high percentage looks from inside. And he gets the bucket. And they've worked the ball around so well tonight for those quality looks from mid-range. There's 45 seconds left in the third. Here's Dotson. In it goes for the fifth time in 10 shots for him this game. And not relying at all on the three-point shot. Uh, they may want to rethink about stretching the defense a bit like they did in that first half. Here's Windler. Defended by Bridges. Windler with the bucket. The Hornets shooting just phenomenal here tonight. 73% from the field. The shot by Monk is no good. Well, they'll be happy with that look, even though it didn't fall. No, well, you're right. He'd take that 10 out of 10 times. He's not going to miss many of those. Sexton's shot is good. In perimeter scoring, I have to imagine it was a topic of discussion at halftime. But, but it had to be. These days, you need to stretch the floor somewhat to make everything else work. Uh, toughness and energy on the boards. An easy putback to show for it. Deep two from Ball, and it is good at the buzzer. Wow. Resourceful move there, ending the period on a high note. Did a great job of getting a look before the horn sounded and gaining some momentum. And so it's Charlotte out there all by themselves with a 32-point lead to end the quarter. And they're winning the turnover battle very easily in this one. And we've got more NBA action on 2K Sports coming your way after this break. And now we have a moment to uh, reveal our State Farm assist of the game. Uh, just true artistry right there. I mean, great decision on where to go with the ball. And how about the perfect delivery? Well, how about the unselfishness? Night in and night out, we see guys trying to force their own agenda. Not that time. And as we head into the fourth, we'll see if there's a comeback in the works or if it's more of the same from the first three quarters. All right now, a chance to set the floor courtesy of Gatorade. Fourth quarter action, all fueled up and ready to go. And so in the game for the Cavaliers, they've got JaVale McGee, and it's Windler in at the two. Sexton dishes to McGee. Stevens, the pass to Sexton. And another three for Cleveland. You know, we, we've seen this with Sexton in college, and he can get into a zone and just take over a game offensively. That's a two from Martin. And that one off the back of the rim and in. Oh, it's all about the assist on that play. He puts it in the perfect spot. Outside, Sexton. 
And Wade now top of the key. To the middle, here's Stevens. The basket good off the assist from Wade. Stephens got his first basket of the night. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. And the Cavaliers pushing it up now. The open look here for Sexton. And another three for Cleveland. But too bad this scoring hasn't been contagious. I mean, they'd be in much better shape if a few of their other guys could pick up some slack. Trying his luck from deep. And it's the Hornets another three. The real. Come at us, and we're coming right back at you. <laughs> yeah, man. Let's talk about it. The great competition going on. That's what makes a matchup like this so much fun to watch. And there's the patience you want to see from Sexton. Eyes up and finds the open man. Feeds to Biombo. Back to Monk. A three ball. Score the bucket. He's made five so far, shooting a very clean five of seven. Well, he's not going to get an easier look than that. You don't need to double team him, but you can't leave him all alone. Sexton's shot is good. And superb at just finding avenues to the bucket. When Sexton goes strong inside, he is hard to stop. Charlotte's gone two for two from three-point land to start the fourth quarter. Martin goes in and finished off by Martin. And he wasn't about to do anything that would get him in trouble there. Nope, uh, up and in with a one-hand uh, finish, uh, the most basic possible. Here's McGee. Biombo with the block. Over Sexton. And good as it just snugs right down through the net. And we're about three minutes into the fourth quarter. Down low, here's Wade, and it's Wade with the jam. And that's an area that Sexton must keep working on. The, the more he passes, the better his team looks. Martin with the bucket. Here's Sexton. It's stolen by Martin. And here we go. Jumps up, and then Monk with the dunk. Oh, getting off the ground with ease. When Monk gets an opportunity to touch the clouds, he doesn't pass it up. Now, here's Sexton. And a little over three and a half minutes in the books so far here in the fourth. And the slam dunk by McGee. And one step ahead of the defense with that solid screen. And then, Greg, the monster dunk to finish it off. Oh, come on, guys. Someone has to rotate over. Defensively, that's just poor communication. Biombo in the post. McGee's there. Bucket is good. Second chance points always hurt. Just not enough effort to block out. Yeah, that's what's frustrating because you did the job defensively to get the stop, and then you gave it right back. And it's McGee slamming it down. Now, given McGee's explosiveness around the rim, I don't think that anyone should be surprised to see him throw it down like that. Big miscommunication on defense. He recognizes it and quickly takes advantage. <laughs> yeah, they're pouring it on right here. Trying to give the opposition no time light time at the end of the tunnel. The assist is the key to that sequence. I mean, a great look to set them up. Charlotte calls timeout. Greg, you know, we're seeing players take control of their free agent destiny. Do players get a bad rap? for that and switching teams? It, uh, listen, I think, I don't know if you get a bad rap, but you're going to catch the wrath uh, of the fan base. You think of Paul George uh, and Indy or Katie and OKC and fans, they, they're going to feel jilted. There's no doubt about it. They're going to feel scorned. Uh, yeah.
Charlotte's gone to three-point range seven times tonight, knocked down five of them. And the ball's tied up, so we'll have a jump ball. Martin for three. And here are the Hornets now. Rebounded by Maker. Now look, even if he had other places to go with the ball, that's a good shot. You, you can't blame him for letting that one fly. And there it is for him. Stevens. Greg, after we saw top prospects like LaMelo Ball and R.J. Hampton playing a year in Australia, the NBA G League sweetened the deal to attract those blue chippers to this uh, to this G League, which I think is a very interesting uh, topic and a, and a very interesting way to go. It, it is. You know, I think the salaries now could exceed a half million dollars, not to mention the endorsement deals. And they're on a single team that's built around their needs. Certainly an enticing option for those who want to skip the college route. Does this affect colleges, in your opinion, and their recruiting? Not at all. You're going to love your school no matter who plays for them, especially if you're winning. Here's a Kuro, and a Kuro throws it down. And he just punishes the D for falling asleep at the wheel. Yeah, a little disorganized that time, and the result, time two out, points in the loudest way possible. Oh, right. well, listen, guys, that was great work, making them pay for the laps on defense. Charlotte calls timeout. Ladies and gentlemen, your Cavalier girl. Cleveland making a change here. Garland's checked in. Here's Monk. And it's good off the back of the rim and in. Monk's got 15 points here in the second half. Garland with it. And oh, he blocked it and deflects off the backboard. And the basket by Maker. That makes it 10 of their last 12 coming from inside the paint. The shot by Monk is no good. Cleveland's gone two for two from three-point land to start the fourth quarter. Steffens, he can't get it to go. And the Hornets now going the other way. Shot on the wing. Up again. It's good on the putback. And those second chance points really become almost like bonus points when you can get them. Now, Garland. And we've seen more attention given to how fans, Greg, interact with players during the games, whether it's verbal or, or even physical. Is that something the league's got to keep an eye on? Absolutely. It's all about making sure that everyone is protected and respected. You know, this is entertainment, right? This is not do or die from a life standpoint, and we don't want to have things escalate. There's got to be some kind of barrier there. I agree. Now, here's Garland, covered by Martin. Garland, no good. Knowing the kind of competitor he is, I know he's upset with his performance and with the score. That one, no good. Cavaliers shooting an offensive execution has been beyond great there. 63% from the floor in this game. And denied, he sends it right off the glass. Here's Steffens, lets the three fly, hits it from three-point range. And they're gonna have to pay closer attention to him beyond the arc. I mean, he's got two threes in this half, a total of three overall. Martin with the bucket. And we all know Monk likes to shoot, but their great decision, getting it to their open teammate. 
Cleveland's gotten off to a great start from three-point range in the final quarter. They're a perfect three of three. Garland, the pass to Okoro. Here's Steffens. Here's Maker. That shot is off. Right side, Martin. Here's Monk. Down it drops through the net for his ninth bucket. He is nine for 13 so far. It's good to see Monk get chances like this. I mean, easy looks help in getting him into a rhythm. Okoro passes to Garland, and they pick up two. And here is Monk. And last season, we saw the NBA All-Star Game introduce the Elam ending, a target score, Greg, to end the game, and instead of running out the clock, did you like that, and would you widen its use? And no question it's being looked at, maybe for overtimes or, or tournament games. You know, Adam not shy about exploring new ideas. And I got to be honest, going into the All-Star game, I wasn't a fan of the proposed changes. Me too. But once you saw it all play out, I have to say I was entertained. And, and I applaud the commissioner and the players in the league for buying in. And I think the fan experience was made all the more better. Good point. To the inside. And there's Garland. That's good on the assist from Okoro. Garland's got nine points in the quarter. Now here is Martin. Defense right on him. Here's Biombo. Oh, and he plucks it off the glass. Wow. It's three on three on the fast break. All alone. Garland with the bucket. Garland's got 21. Oh, the timing couldn't have been better on that assist. Wing shot on the way. Diambo, no luck. And for the Cavaliers, they're shooting an incredible 64% from the field in this game. Here's Stevens. No good with the triple. Charlotte's gone to three-point range seven times tonight, knocked down five of them. Biombo with it, now guarded by Maker. Biombo, no luck. The shot's there for him, and he's got to take it. I don't care if he doesn't convert. That's a shot he has to continue to take. Garland dishes to Maker. No good on the shot, a bit long that time. Charlotte's gone two for two from three-point land to start the fourth quarter. Well, guys, this was never really a contest. Just a total obliteration, if you will. And you can safely say mission accomplished now for Charlotte. This was a team performing to its uh, fullest capability. Uh, a, a hugely satisfying win. A, a, a game that not many will soon forget. And on the other side, one that I think most will try to forget. And it'll go down as their first official win of the new year. And it's just competing. You know, giving your best when it matters most. Well, this is what guys play for. And when it pans out like this, it's a great feeling. Back to Maker. And the dunk by Maker. Time out, time out. And how about the communication between teammates on that alley-oop? And that's what you need to pull that thing off. Charlotte calls timeout. They're ahead by 33. There's 48 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Ladies and gentlemen, your Cavalier Girls. Let's take a look at the new balance player of the game, Terry Rozier. And Kevin, it, it's a no-brainer. He's controlled every aspect of this game, and it's just so fun to see a player perform at a level that's just higher than anyone else out on the floor. I don't think anyone in this building saw this coming. I'm sure that of the players who these fans thought would beat them, his name was not at the top of the list. 
That's a two from Martin. And good. Got the friendly bounce off the right side of the rim. And they came in determined to take this one. It's going to be a happy flight home. Yeah, there's no doubt as to who was the better team. I mean, they, they proved it with this win. Here's a Kuro, and a Kuro throws it down. And when he's on the floor, offensive rebounding is always going to be a strength for them. Greg, he keeps so many possessions alive, doesn't he? Yeah, and, yeah, he does. And the defense has to be aware of this. When you don't put a body on him, you pay the consequences. Two-second difference between shot clock and game clock. Let's it go from 14. Now here's McDaniels. And he gets it to go, hitting off the back of the rim. Akoro with it. So no problem for Charlotte as they get the win. To come into an opponent's building and dominate the way they did tonight says, I think, Greg, an awful lot about this team. I, I guess they don't need home cooking to feel at <laughs> home. I mean, Kevin, just a masterful performance all the way around. And that about wraps it up. For David Aldridge, Greg Anthony, and Chris Weber, this is Kevin Harlan thanking you for watching the NBA on 2K Sports. See you later.